This program is brought to you by the Peel Hotel, proud sponsor of Bent TV. Welcome to Ben TV. Hi, I'm Michael Sue. And I'm Gwendolyn Birkin. In tonight's program, lesbian and gay artists talk about their work in relation not only to our own community, but also to wider social and artistic contexts. So, what do we mean when we glibly describe someone as a gay artist, or their work as gay art? Do these labels have any meaning? If so, what is the definition of gay art? And if not, why are these used at all? these examples of art have in common? All the artists represented here are or were creators of gay art. That is art which has some special significance to lesbians and gay men. Either because it was created by artists who identify as lesbian or gay, or because the work contains lesbian or gay characters or images, or just because it appeals to some camp or gay sens sensibility. It is important to point out here that the sexuality of the artists involved cannot always assume to be gay just because they include gay characters in their work or because their work has been embraced by the gay community. Whilst a number of the artists represented here would have or do openly identify as lesbian or gay, others represented would not have been able to, either from fear or simple ignorance of the whole concept of gay. Gay, gay men especially have for a long time fetishised the long line of famous and artistic poofters reaching back to time immemorial. In Larry Crane's 1985 play The Normal Heart, Ned Weeks, the main character, claims his place as a gay man within an extensive historical and social culture, which he states includes the likes of Proust, Tchaikovsky, Cole Porter, Socrates, Leonardo da Vinci, Tennessee Williams, James Baldwin, Aristotle, Lorca, and others. Big deal. You might say the term homosexual hadn't even been thought of when some of these people were alive, much less the notion of gay politics or queer theory. Yet by connecting to a line of historical figures such as these helps to create a sense of gay identity which exists beyond our own recent experience of gay liberation. If this list is then supplemented with examples of the less represented women of lesbian creative her story, which includes women from Sappho to Gertrude Stein, Virginia Woolf and beyond, we have a long and complex list of artists who have been creating gay art ever since Adam and Eve got bored with each other. 
It also helps to dispel the misconception held by some sectors of the mainstream community that lesbian and gay identity is merely a sexual one. This history is very important for our community to become aware of and lay claim to. The examples of gay and lesbian artists and homosexual subject matter throughout time may not only answer narrow-minded critics who claim that homosexuality is a symptom of our decaying contemporary society, but it can also prove to be a powerful resource to men and women travelling through the coming out process, providing them with a strong social and historical context within which they can feel secure and inspired. So what exactly does this label gay art mean? Good question. Would all of these men and women wish to be referred to as gay artists rather than just plain artists? John Waters, the filmmaker of such camp classics as Hairspray and Pink Flamingos, once said that of 40 things he was, gay was not at the top of the list. So what exactly does it mean to be labelled a gay or lesbian artist? Do artists consider it an accolade or a marginalisation of their work? Yeah, it would really depend on what the work was. I mean, if, if somebody wrote a review about, you know, this current film, Eternity, and talked to me, talked about me being gay, I'd be really annoyed because it's irrelevant to the subject matter. Um, if, if, it was, if it was talked about within an interview, because it was talked about, you know, influences on my work, I wouldn't matter, it wouldn't mind, you know. But if it, was that, if it was an upfront thing, I would be very suspicious about the motivations of it. So that's a good starting point to a degree, but I don't want to be labelled as that for the rest of my life as such. But in the, in the, in the gay community, um, there's no need to put that in because I am part of the gay community, but I'm not um, working because I'm a lesbian, because I'm an artist. Maybe. Art of any form can be seen to be the expression of an individual's feelings or a physical manifestation of some reaction to the external world. As lesbians and gay men, we have a different experience of the world to most heterosexual people. Our desires are labelled as sick, immoral, deviant or only existing as some kind of minority. We must constantly deal with oppression and marginalisation. Our voices are constantly in danger of being ignored or stifled. If we look at the majority of Western art, we find that our desires, our experiences, ourselves, are not represented very much at all. Until fairly recently, when lesbians and gay men were represented in mainstream art, we were represented in insulting, demeaning ways. This is perhaps the contemporary context that gay artists are working within. A lot of people in the world still largely refuse to acknowledge the very existence of lesbians and continually equate male homosexuality with AIDS. Some gay artists choose to confront these issues in an overt political manner through their work. I think until the HIV epidemic hit, my line would have been 10 or so years ago, I'm an artist and the images are gay because I'm gay. Since the epidemic, I felt the need for affirmation, for some sort of shared experience so that I guess during hard times I believe personally that it's important that there is some sense of we're all in this together. That's my own personal viewpoint. Um, I guess it's also being honest, um, something that's important to me, I need to feel we're all in this together. So when the epidemic hit, I was more conscious, I suppose is what I'm saying, I was more conscious of creating images that, this is where I take the dark glasses, the um, images that I was making were proactive, or turn that, that they were easily identified as shared experiences um, by other gay people. Um, not exclusively in the context of the epidemic at all, but I'd have to say that's a large part of it. It was then that I was really aware of the need for the, um, the images to do something, to move people, to say something, to actually take us from uh, a sense of being overwhelmed or grief or uh, depression or anxiety to say, hey, you know, other people are feeling that too, it's unnatural, your friends are dying, they're getting sick, they're dealing with a lot. And in that context, I suppose responsibility is a good word. I felt responsible to myself to make sure that my art meant something at a time when there needed to be images that meant something and took people 
somewhere else. How much we come back to the real world, whatever that is. You know, a state of mind that is the West Sun, West Sun. So I'm basically seen or see myself as a, a political artist, but not political, reactive or active in a way where um, I'll you know, throw something in someone's face and make them look at it so, in that way. So I'm much more of a passive political artist in a way. The content of my work at the moment has a lot to do with um, with AIDS, homophobia and discrimination, but more so to do with difference of, of people. Um, and that doesn't come from my, my sexual choice, that comes from my mind and from myself. My sexual choice is outside of that, but that feeds my painting, that feeds the language that I talk about more than anything else. Making a piece of work like Night Out was to me um, an expression of what I felt about life um, in terms of those relationships. Um, when you look at the film, there's varying views. I mean, there's two characters, there's two points of view, and what I want to do was, I didn't want to say, this is my view, you know, I'm telling you how to think or how to feel. It was simply to explore that um, and to explore the way other people had felt about the subject matter of, you know, the idea about, um, I guess, you know, being in a sense married to another man, but then something coming in between and, and ripping that apart in a way. And, I mean, that's incredibly subjective. But, um, I guess, you know, that you find, you use your work to express the way you feel about life generally. Uh. Art by lesbians and gay men serves a very important function, which may have something to do with establishing a visibility and identity for our community and ourselves. All art is a product of the time in which it is created, and of the ideas and desires of the artists who created it. This is not to say, however, that gay art has no relevance to the people outside the gay community. Indeed, do artists create art for the gay community alone, or are they more interested in a wider audience? Well, with, with a piece of work, I mean, because I made films when I was at film school, and now, you know, I've made Eternity. I mean, I think whatever film I make, it would be, it would be, um, to, you know, target it in the widest audience possible because I don't feel there's any reason to make films for the ghetto, you know. I mean, I think that, you know, if you want to make films for your friends, you can. You can make it on gauges and, and that are smaller and, um, you know, cheaper production values and, and that's, a, that's something you can do for yourself or, you know, you can take, take a series of photographs or whatever it is, but I think once you get to a certain level in production, then you're responsible because you're spending, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of money to, to sort of make this film. And to me, I've always felt that there's no use making films unless they're going to be seen by someone. And I think that you can be, you have to be as accessible as possible without being bland. Um, and I mean, one thing that's really good with Eternity is that it's proved that, you know, my instincts were right. And also the same with Night Out. I mean, I've made, basically made films that, you know, pretty much are the films that they're meant to be. And they've been appreciated as such, you know. Um, because, um, I mean, I don't paint solely for the community because I, I do place myself outside of that community. My, the community, the only point of me being in that community is that I prefer being with women or I choose to be with women or all my lovers of being women and that is the only point of, of sameness for me. Um, I'm not interested in painting um, for the community because there's not much I want to say about the community. There's things I want to say to the community. Um, things, I mean, one painting I did for the community, which was the first um, lesbian festival a few years ago, was a piece called Bury All Hiding, which was basically about homophobia still within the lesbian community. And so when I do want to talk to the community, I'll be talking at them rather than with them. Um, with them, I mean, with them is where I, I dance, and with them is where I have coffee. And that's my social aspect is the community, but my working and intellectual aspect has nothing to do with the community. It's all in reaction to the community more than in um, being passive with the community. If, yeah. So I don't want to paint for the community because the community doesn't interest me. It doesn't. There's nothing beautiful for me to do about that. It's all in reaction to to something that, as an artist, I've got things to say rather than things to compliment on. Yeah. Um.
and taking photos of people doesn't interest me. Painting lesbians doesn't interest me. Um, like like other artists in the mainstream community, when they paint a portrait, that doesn't interest me. And so I still have those things of why I'm an artist is more important as to a representation of what is beautiful. Yeah. Gay men and women are, despite what some critics would have us believe, human beings after all. And there are some things that are common to all people no matter what their sexuality, gender, race or culture. These things are commonly called universals because they are supposed to be relevant to all people throughout all time. I would say that, especially during adolescence and the whole coming out time, that most people I've spoken to have experienced that isolation, that feeling of anxiety, that feeling of not belonging, of confusion, you know, the old cliche of people looking at billboards covering heterosexuals and so with heterosexual actors and parents who are heterosexual and trying to find some sort of image that you can relate to. And part of my work is involved in that, in creating images that weren't there before that will possibly help somebody go, hey, I'm not the only one, or hey, it's okay to be gay, or somebody else feels the way I do. Particularly gay men have had to deal with a lot of death in the last few years. And seeing friends who you thought were going to live to be, you know, 70 or 80 or 90, that they're not, go you know, they're not going to. And it actually informs your every, your daily life all the time, the way that you look at it. Um, the relationships you form, even the friendships you form. And I guess, for me, eternity was, um, I don't know, it was, you know, it is not, it's not about a gay man or a gay character or anything, but it's more about something more spiritual, I suppose, in terms of existence. Mm. accept that art is about personal expression, it can't be assumed that general acceptance of that expression comes easily to an audience. A lot of gay and lesbian art has often been branded as obscene, pornographic, corrupting, etc. And as a result, the artists who create this work have been branded as sick, perverted or immoral. This narrow-minded attitude can often lead to various forms of discrimination, censorship and often violence. Yeah, I, I have I have come across um, certain instances of homophobia. Um, the most overt one was when I was doing sound mix for Night Out and we took the tracks in to the company that were doing it. And because they're student productions, you know, basically school scabs a mix out of them. And um, so in a way you're not really meant to be there. But the assistant put the tracks up and um, for the mixer and left them there. And we went in the next morning to mix them. Anyway, uh, he left a note with the tracks. And I knew there was something in the in this note that for the mixer that was about a little bit more than the work. I don't know, it's just instant. And when the mixer went out of the room, I read the note and it read, P.S. Don't Catch AIDS. And that was like a big, you know, it was like a slap in the face. Because I mean, after that, you need to sit there all day and mix your film with this person. And you know, it's about gay sexuality and, you know. So, you know, that was, that was one instance. But there are also things like um, people see the sexuality before they see the work. And 
you know, it's just because basically most of society is homophobic. No matter what we might think or how enlightened we might feel we are or how much laws have changed, essentially society is pretty homophobic. And um, it comes out in the most amazing ways. And by people not being interested in you simply because you're a gay man, um, yet they'll be interested in somebody else who does incredibly mediocre work because they're straight and because they're married and because they have two children and they fit into everything. And it's because that person has knowledge of their, knowledge of that filmmaker's background, the same way they have knowledge about your background, that you are homosexual. Therefore, you know, you're treated completely differently. Now, I'm not saying this is, you know, incredibly common all the time, but it does come along and trip you up sometimes when you think, oh, why aren't they being so friendly to me? I'm really friendly to them. And it's simply because they're homophobic. And most of the time, I don't even realise it. I think I remember where at art school where I was doing an installation in the hallway where one would assume that art school is a place where you can do whatever you like. That whole thing of you know the mad, esoteric individual artists can do whatever they like, even if they're in a piss in the corner of the hallway. That should be fine. Um, but that's not what I was trying to do. I was doing an installation where you know some janitor comes in and goes, "You can't do that to the floor." And it's like, well, and that was a sense of discrimination. But as an artist, as my own self, um, I thought, well, hang on, isn't an artist allowed to do these things? And I sort of got through that. But in, a, in regard to, say, discrimination, the way we look at discrimination now, which is to do with sex and to do with gender and to do with all those things, um, I mean, I could say that, yes, I have been discriminated in two different environments, one going through applying for a master's and another one by... Um, exhibiting to a lesbian audience and where the piece in the lesbian audience was stolen from the exhibition. I could see that as a, a discrimination of some kind of reaction towards towards what I was trying to say. Um, and within the Masters, it was like, the question I was posing was, if a particular Australian artist who's gay was to be a lesbian, would she have been as big as what she is today? And I walked away from that, from that um, application feeling that I was discriminated against because um, because I was a loud, talking, provocative woman who was talking about a sexuality, posing a question about a sexuality in an art world where this person was highly regarded, where this school where I was applying for was highly regarded and I was in there basically probably going to be seen as an agitator to that whole thing on two levels, to the art community and two to the, to the upbringing of artists. And so I walked away feeling that and talking to friends was like, yeah, I think you're discriminated against. But um, other than that, you know, censorship, no one can shut me up about censorship. You know? I am aware of the fact that some of my work has been over the gay and certain gallery owners or art people in the art world have gone, they won't sell its men, right? Don't you have any nice pictures of women? Is that discrimination? Uh, when you put it in the context of the art world and the art market and the art supermarket, um, maybe it is discrimination. It's probably called business mentality, I think. Um, I've had people tell me to cover up erect penises in my work, but then again, so did the council, so did lots of other people. They were told to cover up dirty bits. So I don't see that as being discriminatory because I'm gay. I think the only time that I've really gone was when gallery owners have asked me how heterosexual, how many pictures of women I've got because men don't sell. Uh. One thing that does bind us together in a way is the fact that when we look around us, we don't see our desires, our lifestyles, ourselves represented in art, media or advertising with the same regularity as heterosexual people do. We are made invisible by the straight world. And it is this imbalance, this gap, that some of our artists are trying to redress. Hey, we may be all gay, but we're all different. That's probably all I want to say in the end. And I'm an artist, then I'm a lesbian, then I'm everything else, and that's what I am. Yeah, that's about it. I feel, you know, there's a lot of voices that can be heard, and hopefully mine will be one of them. We're going to finish there, right?